Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the open source stream. Today we're focusing on chaos engineering. This background music is called Future Pop. I'm here for it. I need a little mellow in my Monday. You know, just a little dash of chill. I'm Rain Leander, developer advocate with Cockroach Labs, and every Monday I do open source stream where I explore uh, open source projects. Today is a little bit different. Music is still too loud. <laughs> I love you music. Love you future pop. There we go. A little bit better. A little bit better. Yes. Yes. Okay. Every Monday we explore an open source project. We see how easy it is to get started. And if we find something wrong, we file a bug. Today is a little bit different though. Um, last, actually more like 10 days ago, I was going to say last week, the week before last, I was supposed to talk at Chaos Carnival which is a chaos engineering uh, uh, conference. And I was going to do a talk on Gremlin and chaos and uh, sorry, Gremlin and CockroachDB and do an experiment within chaos engineering to see how well Gremlins and cockroaches can play together. Um, and, and, and then I realized, you know what, this, this might could be its own show like chaotic cockroaches we need like as many c words in that title as possible cockroach chaos something something along those lines and i i did a little research and i wanted to bring that to you there's so chaos engineering in case you're not familiar i'm gonna read straight off of my notes um, it's the discipline of experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. So my history of chaos engineering is I heard about Netflix. I was at some conference and Netflix was presenting and basically they were concerned that their streaming platform, in case you're not familiar with Netflix, they were concerned that their streaming service would go down during production. And so they created Chaos Monkey, uh, which is this little script that goes around and literally kills nodes and, and uh, runs up bandwidth and and does all these chaos engineering experimentation on production systems um, and it's up to the netflix uh operators to make sure that no matter what this script does uh netflix stays up that's how i heard about chaos engineering and to me this is absolutely fascinating i come from a developer background I do not think about the operation side as much as I should, but here we are. And I wanted to just introduce a couple of uh, open source projects that if you want to learn more about chaos engineering, you can. And this may or may not be a prequel to a new show about chaos and cockroach tv i mean it is it is literally marketed as survives anywhere and yet can it you know so like i think that would be a lot of fun let me know if you think that would be a lot of fun uh let's see if restream wants me to have a lovely stream today <laughs> First of all, uh, these are the principles of chaos engineering, and they're in several languages. Um, yeah! Yes, so AJ, part of the reason why um, I was putting this talk together um, 
And and by the way, it didn't happen because I got an incredibly migraine, which is kind of like chaos engineering for the human side. Like, what do you do when you're human? <laughs> like, can't leave the bedroom. Um, and what we did was one of my colleagues took over. Um, he's very familiar with Gremlin. He's very familiar with chaos engineering. And of course, he's very familiar with Cockroach DB. And so he, he took it over and kept it generic. But my talk was originally going to be about bringing together um, uh, Gremlin and Cockroach TV. And it was based off of this Medium article, which is pretty, I mean, it's 2020, but it's kind of unknown. Hey, unknown. <laughs> I just said unknown just because someone said hi. Hello. Um, and, and I was reading over this and it's kind of, it goes into how to install the local version of Cockroach TV onto Ubuntu's using uh, AWS or GCP. Um, but I was like, what would this look like with serverless? So I was installing, um, and then let's just say that experiment went south. <laughs> um, but I, but what, what had happened was, first of all, I found out Gremlin does not install into Mac OS in a supported way. So I found a way to install it on Docker on Mac OS and Cockroach TV also installs onto Docker. It's getting deprecated, but it's still there. And so I was basically going to combine them both on the same Docker image and therefore run the experiment. My, I can show you my, my outline for this talk. Um, when gremlins play with cockroaches, um, this is installing Gremlin. Oops, can't download to Mac OS. We're using Docker. Um, so I was going to do a resource exhaustion on the database, see if it um, copied over, uh, do a data source saturation because you can check latency on the input and output, um, and then basically just see how Cockroach DB did. But yeah, um, so Chaos Monkey became Gremlin to answer your indirect question, if that question exists. Um, and while that's not one of the talks I am, or projects I am recommending today, um, I, I do highly recommend Gremlin. It was smooth as silk. There is a free tier to use it. It does have an open source aspect to it. It was, it was except for the Mac <laughs> OS install. Um, it was it was pretty easy to use. It was pretty nice. The interface on it is just beautiful. It's a click click, not a very high ramp up for learning. Um, so first, check out the principles of chaos engineering if you're not familiar with it. Um, I personally am absolutely fascinated by the idea of trying to break your stuff. Um, but yeah, what we're working on is resiliency here. Second. So this one's on GitHub. It is, what kind of license do you, you know, I just made creative comments. Okay. Um, this one is an awesome list, which is pretty common in, I should be putting these links in to chat. Okay. Principles of chaos engineering. Bam. And then this awesome list. This is far and above just a beautiful um, list of resources for chaos engineering um, on GitHub. It's uh, Creative Commons. Um, if you're familiar with the awesome list, it basically is curated typically by just the maintainer. but there's always a collaborative element to these. And I particularly appreciate that the maintainer, Pavlos, uh, divided the contents out um, 
like specifically that they not only uh, divided out books, which books are not necessarily open source, but some of them are, but there was cultural section, education, papers, game days. I love the sections. Um, even Chaos Engine, Chaos Carnival is uh, down here in the, not papers, not game days, not blogs, conferences. Yeah. And I, and I do highly recommend Chaos Carnival. It was an absolute delight to almost speak with them, for them. I look forward to it. Hopefully next year, uh, they let me come back. Um, and then most importantly, form, forums, places you can watch. Now, I would be remiss if I did not bring up Chaos Monkey, um, which is still going strong and is still, still open source. Um, we're not, by the way, we're not touching any getting started guides today because I'm talking about one, two, three, four, basically four projects today. But if you're interested, we could go into detail with any one of these and I would love it. Now, Litmus Chaos. Similar to Chaos Monkey, Chaos Monkey is a script where you basically give it the amount of access that you feel comfortable with and you just go, okay, and it randomly messes with your production system. Again, it's completely fascinating to me that a company like Netflix, who prides itself on uptime, would invent something like this, but also that makes complete sense. Litmus is very similar to Kremlin in that you can set up um, experiments. Um, I have not played with Litmus, but I look forward to it. Um, oh, love it when there's a clear getting started section right away. Chaos Monkey does not have a getting started. <laughs> I assume ah see here we go but this is very clear and i love that like if you're not gonna have a strong getting started like this is how to click click go this this is nice somewhat this is an opportunity though someone should write the getting started get, like a streamlined process for deploying chaos monkey pop, possibly using Ansible, um, playbooks, just saying. Okay, so Litmus, beautiful. It's got the prereqs, got my installer. I got Kubernetes 1.17 or later. I, my laptop would not handle that. <laughs> Helm and kubectl, cool. Very cool. So I could get this one going pretty well if I had a separate system. <laughs> then I wanted to touch on Chaos Toolkit. I did not find this directly um, when I was looking around, but what I like about it is that I was searching for Chaos Engineering. So originally my search was Chaos Engineering uh, Resources. And then I came across this because I did chaos engineering open source. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. Oh, we've got spammers. How awesome. Here we go. Oh, man. Oh, and it starts, it's Python based. That's cool. I got Python and it has it created within a virtual environment. I am here for this. Nice to a virtual environment, install the CLI. I feel like this is I could do this. Please hold. 
What's the worst that could happen? Oh, dang. It doesn't like my... I was gonna say that was smooth. Dang. Well, that was ridiculous. That's awesome. Okay, that's that's pretty that's pretty awesome. Discover capabilities and experiments. Display information, initialize a new experiment. Ah, oh, this is so cool. See, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. So, oh, and that's it. Oh, I was counting the wrong. So, yeah, that's, that's it for today. It's an easy day. <laughs> and it's 320. Thank you for coming. Um, yeah. Maybe we should play with this. Chaos Toolkit. So, yeah. I'm kind of, um, tempted to, um, I don't actually want to edit it. But I want to look at this um, GitHub repo. By the way, very tempted to. By the way, does this also my calendar? Let's maybe not have your calendar right there. Um, very tempted to um, talk about like what makes code open source versus um, just code that you throw on the on the internet because you realize that if you just put your code online it is copyright by default this is uh let's say i'm writing a haiku and i just write a haiku on a napkin that haiku no matter what if i frame it put it on the wall um as long as i don't put uh, a creative commons emblem or otherwise state this may be used for public consumption for reuse remix whatever you want if i don't state that then it is assumed that that haiku is copyright that <laughs> i don't know how they would figure out who copyright to whom they'd probably put anonymous if they couldn't trace it back to me but if you just throw your code on GitHub or GitLab or anywhere else with no license, it is copyright by default. You have to put an open source license with it. Um, so please, please, please always remember to put an open source license. If, if you are putting your code online to share and not as like, of course, a recursion uh, tool, which it, 100% that's what you could be using it for, but you could also make it private in that case. Um, and Soapbox on licensing. So it runs based on Spinnaker. Fully integrated with Spinnaker. I have never heard of Spinnaker, which is a CD. They use it in Netflix. Got it. Why does it have AWS 
in AWS. That's something we could totally file. Looks like it's AWS ported. Does not contain package. Looks like it's slightly incompatible. And then I feel like Simeon Army. I saw somewhere that Simeon Army. There it is is a retired tool. It's kind of sad. It's, some of it has been moved into Spinnaker, into Swabby, into Chaos Monkey. Oh. So this link, right, that actually is not a good support <laughs> place. Maybe this whole section should be removed. Let's see. All right, let's see how to install Spinnaker. Let's see how far we can get in 30 minutes. And by 30 minutes, I mean um, 20 minutes. Halyard. We've got at least 12 gig of memory. All right, all right, all right. Do we need to... Brew install get, brew install curl, brew install netcat, brew install redis for the redis server, open jdk. Because we're building from source, nvm, and then yarn. Fork all of the microservices. Dang, it looks hard. I am overwhelmed. I am le overwhelmed. I do want to point out that isn't the the screen, the share screen is so pretty today. Or at least maybe my maybe my uh my Okay. So Spinnaker looks like that. Chaos and Chaos Monkey looks like a lot. Let's see how much further we can get along with with Litmus. Oh no, we were playing with this chaos toolkit. All right, let's actually do this. 
Let's see if I can set this up so we can read and code at the same time and not show off our calendar at the same time. Nope, stop that. Oop. There we go. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> Make sure you create your VEMS as well. <laughs> no, why didn't you? Oh, yeah, the dot. No, I'm going to have to install the, there should be a something, there we go. There we go. Okay, this is very convenient. This we already did, but we might need to do on our virtual system if it did not install. Thank you. Cool. Let's upgrade. We didn't, didn't we already install and upgrade? Yes. So this feels like double. Interesting. That's cool. I'm here for this. Okay. I keep forgetting I could just be copying this. Ah. Oh, because I didn't have all those directories. Okay, fine. We sold. The settings file for the chaos toolkit has to be located under the following path. So I'm going to make directory. that and then I'm going to vim no because I'm in chaos toolkit so just a second make directory home slash dot chaos toolkit that's what I want to do and then vim Seriously. 
And then schmod that. Okay. All right, chaos discover specifies a toolkit integration extension to bootstrap experiments. Experiments are, let's say you're using a, you're doing a, a, a bandwidth experiment on your um, system. And so you might um, specifically have it use a certain percentage of your network and see if you're still able to uh, stream. Or you might have um, a, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Let's blank on all these terms. Uh, you might experiment with uh, your CPU being used at running at 50% and seeing whether your applications are able to run anyway. Um, so those are experiments, um, which you would theoretically run before you go into production. And then the results of that experiment are published in a discovery path, apparently, which is cool. Let's go over to the getting started. We installed, whoa. Do I have to? Sure. What's the worst that could happen? Cool. It's always a good sign when it just absolutely hangs. Katakoda? Yes. Huh. Weird. Oh, this must be a, an O'Reilly. This is really annoying. Why? Why isn't your getting started on here? Wait, no, seriously. Just give me a getting started. We did that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I think we got lost. I think I'm still lost. I feel like I'm not sure how I would 
say how like this is during a toolkit in AWS, but how did I get here? Right? How do I, how do I do a, how do I file a bug against, I'm confused, <laughs> just straight out, I'm confused, how, how do, free opens, why the chaos toolkit, Okay. Oh, that's cool. It uses JSON or YAML as the file. We kind of caught that. Are you lost? I'm lost. It's cool. We can be lost together. I feel like this is one of those things that we need to play with more. I love this, that it has a contrib contribution section. And then let's see what kind of issues it has. I would love to know this. Reply, nope. Nope, it doesn't. It's good to know. It was opened as recently as 10 hours ago. I love it. Yeah. Well, I'm lost. I hope you're not. We're lost together. I think... I think this has a potential for um, fascinating experiments on CockroachDB or any other project, frankly. Um, yeah, let me know if you're interested. If you're watching this later, go ahead and comment. I always keep an eye out on the comments to come in later. Uh, tomorrow, my colleague, Adrian is streaming Casual Coding Tuesdays, where he'll be playing with something. You have to tune in to find out. On Thursday morning, another colleague, uh, wow, complete blank, Raphael, is, uh, he does watch me work. On Fridays is, I will be back with uh, Playing With Roaches where I am going to play with Heroic Labs, uh, Mr. Autofire, who is that? So Heroic Labs is a gaming platform that uses Cockroach TV, which I love. Um, and then they, where is it? There we go. 
Lightheart is the gaming developer that uses Heroic Labs, and we are going to explore their game called Mr. Auto Fire. We're going to shoot things like sharks and bad guys, and bad guys riding sharks. And then later that day on Friday is uh, Jordan's large databank, his Twitch stream. Yeah. And I'm sure there will be stuff on Wednesday and Thursday. We always have stuff on Wednesday and Thursday. But yeah, thanks for joining me today, where we have explored several projects within the Chaos Engineering scope. Stance it out, and I'll see you next Monday. <laughs>